Okay, we got this uh, 2015 Dodge Durango with a check engine light on. This has the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. We are going to give her the old code scanner -oo. Oh, looks like we got a P0300 and P0301, which are multiple cylinder misfires and cylinder number one misfire. So, that's definitely going to cause the check engine light to come on. By the way, if you're wondering, I'm uh, testing out these sick goggles. We'll have a link in the description below if you want to buy some. Anti-fog. I don't think they're uh, safety goggles at all, but they're cool. Anyhow, back to the scanning. Doesn't look like we have any other codes. She's got a clean bill of health. Oh, looks like we got one front door mode uh, number two control performance. Probably needs an actuator. They go bad on these all the time. But we're not here for the actuator. We're here for the misfire. So let's head out to the front of the vehicle here. Yank this cover off. So we have cylinders one, three, and five, and two, four, and six on this side. So cylinder one's right here, but we did have a multiple cylinder misfire. So that makes me suspect that it may need plugs. This vehicle does have 214,000 kilometers on it, and it has not had plugs as far as the uh the customer has told me it's never had plugs so probably needs plugs but i'm going to take this intake off we'll just quick make sure that uh the coil is plugged in all that stuff i think i'm going to try to swap coils from cylinder one and three and we'll also uh take a look at the plugs while we have those coils out all right so first thing we got to do to get this intake off here is we've got this little connection here so we just pull back on that red locking tab and we should be able to just push that down and pull it out. Now we got this eight millimeter band clamp. We just need to loosen off. Then we're gonna go over to this side here, undo our air box. One clip, there's another clip here, but it is missing. Undo this PCV hose, it's just pressed on that I just set that there now there's a, a Christmas tree style retaining clip for this wiring harness it's already uh, disengaged we'll say work this air box up now there's a peg like this underneath of here that goes into a rubber grommet just be careful, really like work it back and forth, try to get it out. Cause if you just yank on it, most of the time, this brittle plastic just snaps off. Um, looks like we also just need to disengage that. So this just, there's a rubber band that's on the bottom of this um, valve. That's your purge control valve for your uh, evaporative emissions. And it just slides onto this tab, so that off I can remove this whole intake there's that uh, peg I was talking about those break off all the time so be careful now we have access to our three lovely coils here so we can go ahead with a 10 millimeter socket we can uh, remove these uh, like I say I'm just gonna pull these two and swap the coils to see if uh, we got a coil issue for cylinder one and we're also going to take a look at spark plugs as well because you never know with this amount of kilometers on the vehicle i would not be surprised if it needs plugs i'll uh, probably be installing plugs on this uh tomorrow so it'd be good just to see what they look like anyways now these bolts they don't completely come out you can take them completely out but you only have to loosen them off partially and then uh as far as these connectors go, I push them down as far as I can and then 
push in on this little portion here to disengage it. And now we can pull that up. We can inspect the coil. Looks good. I don't see any uh, any cracks along the top. This is a filled with like epoxy, and sometimes the uh, they'll split, and if they crack, then usually they're susceptible to moisture, and that just causes them to fail. So, one thing you could do is use some uh, tire chalk or a paint pen or sharpie even, and just mark the cylinder locations before you take them out. And then that way when you get swapped around, you know what coil came off of what cylinder and could help you figure out uh, what's what. So I'm just gonna do that to this one here. So we know that this is cylinder number two. Just gonna go ahead and grab myself a white paint pen. These are super handy to have, by the way. So let's say two. And this one's coming out of cylinder one. Just like that. Okay, let's grab our spark plug socket. It is the smaller of the two common sizes, which is a 16 millimeter or 5 eighths. Uh, spark plug socket has the rubber in the center to capture the plug. You can also use just a regular socket and a magnet if you have if you don't have a spark plug socket. Not a big deal. Make sure that's down and seated on there. I have seen where these spark plugs come loose, not on this specific engine, but I've seen um, the GM. 1.8 turbo that's in the uh, Chevy Cruze. I've seen two of those cruises come in where spark plugs actually came so loose that the vehicle started to, uh, it sounded like it had a knocking noise and it was, uh, spark plugs were pretty well right out of the threads. So there we go. We can see the, uh, the electrode there and this grounding electrode looks fairly worn. I would say that gap is probably very excessive. Definitely time for a new set of plugs. You can see, if you zoom in on that, you can see quite the, uh, the angle. Like that should be very uh, square at the end of that, but you can see how it's, uh, it comes to like almost a sharp point. So those plugs are definitely worn. Another thing you can look at too, you see all the rust that's on there. That's another sign that they've been in there for a long time. These champions are original plugs. And uh, one other thing you can check for when you have a misfiring vehicle is uh, a carbon trail from where the plug's been uh, obviously not grounding out properly. And uh, you'll actually see like a black line on the side of the uh, porcelain. So. Um, we're just going to pull this other plug out beside the neighboring cylinder. See if it looks, probably looks the same, I'm guessing. Yep. Got a decent little coating on there. So same deal. It's probably just due for plugs. One thing that actually uh, really kills coils is letting your spark plugs go for too long. Because what has to happen then, the bigger the gap, the more the plug has, or the more the coil has to uh, try to jump that gap with spark. So it puts a lot of strain on the coil to try to complete that, um, that jump. 
And uh, I've seen a lot of times where plugs will just be real shitty and it ends up taking out a coil. Um, it'll break down the coil. So uh, I'm just going to flip flop these around. I'm going to put cylinder two or cylinder three, sorry, into cylinder one. I guess I really should have marked this cylinder three, but that's fine. So get these tightened down. These get torqued down to 18 foot pounds if you want to torque them. Like I said, I'm going to be pulling these out tomorrow, so I pretty well know what they need to get tightened down to by feel. It's not like it's going on a road trip. It's just going to be run for a few minutes. Another tip that I have for determining where cylinder one is, is most of the time you can safely assume that the positions of the valve covers, you can see one head is further ahead than, than the other. So it's always the, uh, the head of the engine that's further ahead is usually cylinder one. And that's pretty well most cases for all modern engines i would uh if you're unsure and you need to figure out what cylinder you're going after obviously uh look it up but I'll go ahead and uh, plug this in get this one on here Tighten these down. Just snug on those ones. They don't need to be crazy tight. And then we'll go ahead and install our intake. One thing I like to use on this uh, rubber grommet where that intake clips into is a little bit of silicone spray. This makes the rubber very slippery, aids in installation, prevents things from getting broken. So I also just reach under there with my hand to make sure that that, that dowel piece is in the correct position. on that guy's in that one's on PCV hooked up got this guy on now we just need to tighten up that eight millimeters gear clamp and be ready to erase fault codes and then we can run the vehicle and we can check the misfire monitor on the scan tool to see if we can determine whether cylinder one is still misfiring continuously or if it's more cylinder three now that we've moved the plugs on the coil. Normally you would just move the coil if you're trying to chase a misfire but I'm sure uh, I'm sure the coils are fine on this. So we'll hop in the vehicle here. So we'll go back, 
clear all codes. It's going to go through and clear everything. This thing has quite a few modules in it. A lot of modern stuff. You're going to be running 20 plus modules. I know BMWs and higher end vehicles, I've seen upwards of 80 modules, which is craziness. But that's the way that everything's going. You got so many different uh, departments in the vehicle. So it's going to take a little bit of time to go through everything. There you go. We had 20 systems in this vehicle. We've cleared everything out. So now we can go to engine. We want to see data now. And we should have a misfire monitor under ignition. Let's see if we can find this here. I'm just reading all the uh, titles up top. Doesn't look like we have that in here. I'll just start it up and see if I can go through and find it while it's running. Kind of feel how the engine is. It does feel like it's stumbling. We'll see if it sets a fault code in the meantime while we're trying to find this. Sometimes it has, uh, like I know a lot of vehicles will have a misfire monitor where it's gonna show all the different cylinders and uh, whether or not it gives you sort of a, a count on uh, successful ignition events. Yeah, that's too bad. Well, I guess we uh, pretty much at this point run it and then uh, see what fault codes come back. I'm going to uh, safely assume that it needs plugs based on our inspection. So now to do plugs on these, uh, we got to pull the intake off. Not like a Hemi where you can get to it without having to pull the intake. These V6s, the intake droops over the one side, which covers up uh, two, four, and six which is the driver's side. So we're gonna have to pull that intake off. If you're gonna be doing spark plugs, uh, it's a really good idea to do the intake gaskets as well because they tend to get flattened out over time as uh, oil and heat cycles will uh, break down the rubber. So get yourself a set of intake gaskets if you're gonna be doing plugs and uh, we'll pick up the video from there and give you an update. Thanks for watching.